The next talk is by Werther Hendricks, and he's going to be talking about a systemic model of banking originated losses. Thank you. Um, so um, my name is Werther Hendricks, and I'm working at the Joint Research Center of the European Commission. Um, today I will talk about the systemic model of bank originated losses in Julia. It's a joint work with a colleague of mine, Andrea, Andrea Pagano. First of all, we have the disclaimer. Uh, the content of this presentation does not reflect the official opinion of the European Commission. Responsibility for the information and views expressed in this presentation lies entirely with the authors. Okay, this thing is sorted out now. Then uh, I will talk a bit more about the model itself. So systemic model of bank origin, banking origin losses is just called uh, shortly symbol. And what does symbol? Symbol is a micro simulation portfolio tool uh, that creates um, or simulates bank losses or losses as a whole system for the whole EU. It's, it is like the keynote speaker of Aviva. He said we are simulating credit risk, but we simulate credit risk over the whole EU banking sector. Um, to, to make or to model this, we make use of the internal Basel 2 and 3 uh, or the Basel 2 uh, framework and it's we invert the Basel formula to have per bank uh, a default probability and so then we derive how much uh, the total loss would hit the total loss would be uh, hitting a banking system um, for this we use real balance sheet data and so we can uh, the outcome of this model we use for uh, different regulatory adjustments say that if a bank, if we want to have uh, more bail-in, different capital requirements, we can test different scenarios uh, with this model. So the first model was originally in C, then a couple of colleagues optimized it in C, and now I put it into Julia. Uh, why Julia? Um, the C code runs on a server. Um, most of the time, there is no issue, but we got a request to use symbol with confidential data, and the policy is to have a standalone computer where nobody can hand reach in. Uh, the issue was, we didn't have a SIG compiler anymore, so we were thinking like, okay, let's, let's just, because the C code is also hard to read, uh, let's try just to uh, do it in Julia, and our unit organized a, a Julia course, a two-day Julia course, and from that on, uh, we had some kind of incentive to use uh, Julia more in our day-to-day -day work because my unit is mostly using MATLAB. Um, so there is a strong incentive of the European Commission to use more and more open source software, um, and this made uh, us to put it into Julia. So Symbol is actually a Monte Carlo simulation. I will go through the steps to look what is under the hood. Um, the first step is we generate a vector of normal uh, random variables, or, uh, observations, and then uh, this is the vector is equal to the number of banks in the sample. So we, for the whole EU, if we use uh, public data, we have around 3,000 banks. For uh, if we use confidential data, it's around 5,000 banks, uh, which we have. Then we uh, apply correlation, so we use the Cholesky decomposition of a correlation matrix. And so just multiplying these two is very uh, computis computational in in intensive. So then the bank losses are a transformation of these correlated randoms. And uh, we use this kind of formula to uh, back it out. If you want to know more about the formula, there is uh, the there are two or three papers that are I put in the references where you can read a bit more. But it, and in general, it, it uses a, a fixed uh, loss given default, and then it's uh, the, CD, the, the normal CDF and the inverse normal CDF that you use uh, to have the losses of a bank I. So a bank default happens if a bank the bank losses are larger than the capital available. Um, and so you have some kind of density, uh, you have the loss function for each bank. And um, default happens here when the bank has the minimum capital requirement and even access more capital than, minim than, than the minimum uh, capital requirement. And so uh, default happens when 
bank losses are larger than capital. So until now, everything is still very parallelizable. It's very easy. But what we do is we, we have a, a stopping criteria in our simulation, and this is 100,000 runs with at least one defaulted bank. We could say, we could put it like, uh, we just want to have one million of simulations, two million of simulations, but then it's not certain how many defaults that we have, and we specifically only want to look at what happens if a bank defaults. So my, my Julia experience is, so I started from the C code. I never wrote something in C. It was some pseudo code for me. Um, and the results must be exactly the same. For this, um, I used a random number generator uh, with a C code from, so I called uh, this GS, G, GSL uh, um, random number generator. And then I start optimizing uh, first the sequential version and then parallel setup. The current parallel setup that I have, and uh, this can be changed, and uh, input of your is, is more than welcome, maybe to optimize even further, uh, it's at the moment like this. So we have a main process. This is generating the normal uh, random numbers per batch, say 100, 200, 500, doesn't matter. Then these, uh, these factors of, of, uh, random, of generated normals uh, are put into a remote channel. And the remote processes, they fetch these random uh, vectors, do the matrix mul multiplication, do the transformation, and check whether a bank has defaulted or not. Uh, the remote processes are then putting just Boolean values back into a remote channel. So true, false, uh, whether a bank has defaulted. And if a bank has defaulted, we put also all the bank losses. So the around 3,000 bank losses uh, of one run. So the main process is, is fetching this truth and false, and then depending whether there were many defaults in this batch, then it gets uh, the um, losses of these banks. So um, another option would be that uh, that you write, for example, the, uh, the, the, the generated normal numbers to disk, but you don't know how many simulations you need. So you maybe need 10 millions, maybe 100 millions of simulations, it really depends from sample to sample and how safe the banking sector is. So in the end, what I did, uh, uh, what, I, what I found out is that with the Julia code and this setup, I got a reduction of 50% with my desktop compared to the server that has 12 cores, which is not a very big server, but it, uh, it has some kind of merit. Um, but I also tried it to upscale it more to more parallel process or to more processes. And there was not so much more improvement. Um, and the strange thing was that I thought just by writing false and trues uh, through the remote channel that it would be fast, but apparently it is not so fast and they, they block each other uh, to writing this in the remote channel. And uh, for some future uh, developments we will um, need to publish, or this model is already published in, in many papers, but there's now a more tendency to ask um, for also the code, like the, the, the European countries are asking for the code. Uh, also other professors are, have asked to replicate the code. So we will need to, uh, or we will uh, publish this also in some kind of Julia package. But we have to check some copyright issues as well. Okay, um, these are um, the references. So this is the optimized C code or the optimized version the C version, which is published in the comp computational uh, econometrics, and these are some kind of applications. And this was the original model explained. Uh, thanks. Good. Thanks a lot. Thanks for your uh, Questions? I guess what are the main issues you see with from like regulatory perspective and getting Julia more widely used and like did you what problems do you face and did you have any would you have any resistance and how did you overcome it? So could you please? Did you have any resistance from a like a regulatory perspective of you know can I someone say oh this hasn't been used before we can't touch this sort of thing or we don't know about this? Um, not really because I benchmark or I benchmarked it so many with the original model so I really had exactly exactly the same numbers which was uh, not so easy in the end to, to first get first exactly the same numbers. 
Um, but now I can, because it's, I know it's exactly the same, I can remove the, the GSL um, a normal uh, number generator and I use the, the Julia one. And, and so I first tested a lot and, and now it's, it's, it's uh, okay. Actually, there was not really a lot of resistance yeah, for good. that. Okay, thanks Bota, let's move on to the next talk.